Hey everyone, feast your eyes upon this, a definite underappreciated survivor from the 1990s. For the longest time since I've been doing this channel, and since I've started reviewing older surviving cars, the Aerostar was one of the ones I've been waiting to film for a long time. The sad reality of it is, there just aren't a lot of them around anymore in really nice shape. Rust or fire was the main cause of their extinction, but also they were simply bought and used as they were intended, a family or cargo hauler, and they slowly disappeared off the roads. Aerostar production was from 1985 to 1997 and ran for a single generation. The first Aerostar rolled off the assembly line in June 15, 1985. Production ran all the way from August 22, 1997 and produced solely at the St. Louis Assembly Plant in Hazelwood, Missouri. The Aerostar plant produced 2,029,577 vans in total and ultimately passed the baton to its successor, the Ford Windstar, a full unibody front-wheel drive minivan. Our van was produced in March of 1994. have today is a 1994 Ford Aerostar. A beautiful example of a surviving van that has been pretty much forgotten over time. Ford's body on frame minivan. The Aerostar was available in the window trims at least in three different trim levels and two different lengths. So you had regular length and extended length and you had the XL, the XLT, and the Eddie Bauer. And what we have today is a Bimini Blue over silver metallic, XL extended length. The wheelbase is the same as all vans, just the body has been extended. And the interior is the crystal blue cloth. Now this van is equipped with the XL 401A um, convenience package which includes like power windows mirrors and door locks we've also got the sport package which gives you these body color headlamp surrounds grill the lower body clad cladding in silver you've also got the sport pinstriping and the sport badge there very 90s and of course the aerostar branded aero running boards and the rear bumper is also in silver as well. This van is also equipped with the optional luggage rack. I'll have the full pricing on the screen and I'll put a full options list in the description box below so you can kind of see what the win new pricing was. Say before, Bimini Blue over Silver Metallic with the Crystal Blue Cloth Interior. Power comes not from the standard 3-liter Vulcan V6, but rather the $300 optional 4-liter Cologne overhead valve V6 engine. This 12-valve engine is of iron block and head construction with computer-controlled electronic multi-port fuel injection and a 9 to 1 compression ratio. This engine creates 155 horsepower at 4,200 RPM and 225 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. It's estimated that the Aerostar can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 10.7 seconds. But more importantly, especially for this segment, thanks to its unique mixture of unibody construction and folding frame rails and rear wheel drive architecture, the Aerostar features a gross vehicle weight rating of 5,320 pounds. It can tow up to 4,800 pounds and haul a maximum payload of 1,530 pounds. Very impressive. All Aerostars are equipped with a 20.9 U.S. gallon fuel capacity and consume 6.2 gallons for 100 miles driven with an estimated total driving range of 334 miles. EPA fuel economy ratings are 14 miles per gallon in the city, 19 miles per gallon on the highway, and a combined average of 16 miles per gallon. While a 5-speed manual was standard, this van has a $750 optional 4-speed A4LD overdrive automatic transmission. I have been looking for an Aerostar for a long time, and here it is. 
so happy to finally stumble across one. Uh, yeah, I'm just really excited about it. Alrighty, now we're taking a look at the rear of the Aerostar in detail with all the lights illuminated and everything like that. As you can see, it's just a standard minivan back here. We do have the third brake light that was mandated um, and a heated rear glass window, but nothing really imaginative back here. As you can see with the extended length, you have a lot of uh, glass area, so a nice greenhouse for excellent outward visibility. And the taillights come in a three color pane. We have the red upper portions for brake lights and taillights clear for reverse lamps and amber for turn indicators. For the last model year, that would become red. And of course we have our Aerostar Sport badging back here as well. Heated rear glass window and the odd articulated rear wiper washer. And of course back here we do have all of our badging and everything like that and the pinstriping for the Ford Sport. As we walk along the profile of the van, as you can see, it just has the dry, or the passenger side sliding door. This was before the advent of the driver's side sliding doors, but on screen is our dimensions. As stated before, the wheelbase never changed on the extended lengths, just the body length itself. We do have the sliding opening side windows, but the rear third windows are fixed in place. Steering is hydraulically assisted variable rate rack and pinion with four turns lock to lock and a 42.3 foot turning radius. Wheels are the 14 by 6 inch black painted stamped steel wheels with silver, silver arrow covers shot in 205-70 R14 Hankook Optimo H274 all season tires. Brakes are hydraulically assisted front and disc rear drums with ABS in the rear only. Alright, taking a look at the front of the Aerostar, here we are with all of its lights illuminated. As you can see here, we just have comp composite halogen headlamps inside these uh, clear lenses, and we also have incandescent turn indicators. One of the nice features of the power mirrors is you get these really nice fold-away arrow mirrors. You also have these really nice fixed-in-place wing windows to give better outward visibility. And as we move along the steeply raked hood line, we come into the body color grill and headlamp surround that is found on the Sport Group. Kind of gives it that uh, Explorer meets doorstop look, but it does look good with the body color grill and silver accents. All right, let's take a look inside. And inside is just a wonderful example of a nice surviving 90s Ford van. That probably should never have survived, but it did. These things were used as family vehicles, and so, uh, you know, as a result, they got trashed. Taking a look at the door panels here, very nice shape. Got this blue vinyl door pulls right here. And you also have your power mirror controls here. We've also got power windows and power door locks. You will note the absence of door speakers. There's no mat pockets or anything like that. The doors are very plain Jane, actually. And taking a look at the instrument panel here real quick, we have our headlamp control switch. You can also turn on the dome light, instrument panel dim, air vent right here, multifunction stalk here, tilt wheel. Down here you have your hood release, and of course just the gas and brake pedal. And taking a look at the seats, the seats are in very nice shape. They are very comfortable and very supportive high back bucket seats. They do have the halo style headrest and this vehicle is actually equipped with the full bench seats in the back. But if you had the captain's chairs, these seats would also appear in the middle row. You have two type, types of cloth here. You have this nice velour cloth here. And then you have this more uh, denim or jean style cloth here to give kind of nice contrast. And of course, both the front and pa front passenger and driver have their own armrest. Alrighty, now that we're inside, let's take a look around. As you can see here, we do have Ford's brick style steering wheel to accommodate for the driver's side airbag. We have the horn buttons up here and our cruise controls on and off over here on the left. And over here on the right, we have our resume, set, accelerate, and coast. As stated before, we have our multifunction stalk here. So wiper washer controls, turn signals, uh, and flash to pass and brights. Four-way flashers are right here. And straight ahead, we look at Ford's um, instrument cluster here. Just a standard basic cluster. Um, 
right over here we do have our oil pressure and our coolant temperature 90 mile per hour speedometer we've also got volts and fuel these two little slots on the other side here or just little warning light modules. They contain the turn indicators, the airbag indicator light, and all that kind of stuff. Moving over the top of the dash, as you can see, outward visibility is actually pretty good with these mirrors. And of course, your little windows here to help with a small blind spot there. And sweeping over the top of the aero inspired dash, you'll see it looks really, really nice even to this day. Now we do have two different climate controls. So we have our front climate control fan speed right here. And this one here is our rear control. So we have off rear control, and then we can control our own low, medium, and high fan speeds. In addition to that, we have temperature controls here, a nice big knobs, similar to that of the Taurus, and our panel distribution with air conditioner controls and our heater controls. Moving down here, we have our wiper washer control for the rear window and our rear window defroster, two more air vents, an aftermarket Pioneer uh, AM FM CD player here. And moving down, we have our cigar lighter here. This van has actually never been smoked in. And our cigar or ashtray right here, which is removable. We do have a small storage slot right down here. And on the floor, we have a small console with two cup holders and a storage tray. The older Aero Stars would have the, either the automatic transmission selector lever here, or if you had a, a manual transmission, of course, you'd have that there. Also, Unique to the Ford vans as well, you have a floor-mounted handbrake. That's kind of cool. So overall, taking a look at the interior of the Aerostar, I'm really impressed how well it's held up over time. It's just a really nice place to be. It's actually comfortable. I'm sure this will be really comfortable on long trips. Now looking overhead, we do have a manually dimming rearview mirror. We also have these really nice padded cloth uh, sun visors, and we have fold-down vanity mirrors. Now the sun visors do swing out, but they don't slide or anything like that. And of course we have non high adjustable seat belts up here. You will notice that there is no passenger side airbag. This is one of the many reasons why Ford axed the Aerostar in 1997 to make way for the Windstar minivan to take hold of the midsize minivan. So Ford actually have to redesign this entire dashboard to accommodate the airbag. Not only that, they'd also have to do extensive redesign on the crash structure as well, which have been extremely costly. So Ford opted to not do that and just kill the Aerostar altogether. All right, let's take a look inside. As I said before, only one sliding door to ac access the passenger compartment. No power sliding doors here. It's all manual. You'll notice the contact bus is here for all the locks and stuff like that. And they meet up here with the rest of the main vehicle power. You'd also have your light switch here. This is your entry, entry light here. All right, so the wind, or the Aerostar actually has three rows of seats. So let's take a look at the third row. As you can see, it does seat three across. It is just a single folding bench seat. It's also fully removable. The outboard seats have three point shoulder belts. The middle seat has just a lap belt. And the seat's nice and wide. You have a lot of legroom back here. You've also got adjustable floor vents. You have stereo speakers back here. You've also got some storage, adjustable air vents in that little uh, C-pillar trim there. Now over on this side, however, you don't get all that kind of luxury. You just get the speaker and a little um, storage area here, but no adjustable vents. All right, let's take a quick look at the middle row seat now. As you can see, this one actually just seats two. Each seat gets its own three-point belt. Outboard seat gets an adjustable armrest. The seat also removes. One neat feature back here is you have, <laughs> for the kids, cigar lighter and ashtray. This car is also equipped with the sound system. So we've got auxiliary controls back here. We have two headphone jacks with their own individual volumes. Seek and scan, memory select, and speaker select. You've also got rear fan speed controllers back here, but no temperature control. And of course, your sliding window. Another neat feature is overhead. We have this bar right here, which contains three positional air vents. Very nice little touch there.
All right, let's take a quick look at the cargo area here. Just underneath the license plate frame here is a latch. And you just lift up the panel, the door here. And as you can see with the extended length, an enormous amount of cargo capacity is back here. And with the rear seats removed, you get even more storage capacity as well. All right, so in the floor, as you can see, it's a nice load flat floor. And over on the left hand, or yeah, the left hand side, you have a nice little concealed storage cubby here. Emergency release for your uh, fuel door. You've also got some tie down hooks back here. And over here on the right hand side, we have a little small little storage cubby with this little net and another concealed storage. Back here contains actually the jack and tools for spare tire. So that is the rear cargo area of the Aerostar. And closing the lift gate, just like this. And there you have it, the 1994 Ford Aerostar. We hope you enjoyed this video and a trip down memory lane. If you did like this video, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and Instagram at brentsoj1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.